All right, having said all that, I want to welcome our first speaker this morning, Jan Glashofer, and he is presenting the Intelligence Framework Update. Welcome, Jan. So thank you, Jeanette. Um, yeah, as uh, already said, I will talk about the Intelligence Framework and in particular about the update um, that was done uh, for Bro 2.5. So about me, um, I studied computer science in Germany um, and um, I received last year my master's degree at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And uh, since January, I'm a researcher and PhD candidate um, in the Distributed Systems and Network Services uh, Research Group at KIT. So my first contact with Bro was uh, as a technical student at CERN. Um, and um, yeah, I was there for half a year and um, evaluated how they could probably use Bro. Um, my contributions to Bro so far, I'm planning more, um, are the intelligence framework updates. Um, I also wrote the AF packet plugin and did some uh, other improvements and have some custom scripts you can find on my GitHub. Um, you can also reach me via mail. So um, for this uh, talk today, um, I assume some common ground. So probably all of you who have used the intelligence framework know that there are intelligence files um, with uh, indicators, like uh, here in that case, the domain, bro.org. Um, and to leverage this, um, you configure your local.bro to um, load the framework, intel, scene, and maybe do notice if you want to have notices. And then you just specify the file you want to load. Um, and then magically, Bro starts to produce logs. And um, today, I will dig a bit deeper on how, how Bro does this. So the outline of the talk will be the following. At first, I will talk about the basic concepts, because they are really simple. Um, but um, you have to uh, understand to fully leverage the potential of the intelligence framework. So that's in particular the data model, um, how uh, intelligence is ingested and how it is matched. Um, then I will talk about the new functions uh, in the update and um, uh, some extensions I did also and a bit about future work. So um, what's the data model all about? It's all about the indicators and their types. Um, so for example, we have uh, addresses and hashes and all that stuff. Um, and um, as a side note, um, we have also file-related stuff in the intelligence framework. So if you're using uh, the files framework, um, you have that by default. But if you want to, you can also unload that uh, and get rid of it um, now with the new Bro update. But um, now let's have a look at the indicator again. So um, if you want to feed uh, data into Bro, you don't just feed in the indicators, but also some metadata, um, especially the source and um, by default also a description and other things. So and then that data is um, fed into Bro and there's an internal representation of Bro uh, in Bro. So um, here uh, at this stage, that looks quite the same. Um, but now if you ingest multiple items, um, there's a difference because um, multiple intelligence items might share the same indicator and indicator type, um, but have different metadata. And what happens is that um, this is a kind of a relational database in the internal representation. So Bro stores the indicator and the indicator type. Uh, and links multiple metadata records um, that are kind of keyed by the source. So um, now, how is intelligence usually ingested um, to, to build up that in-memory database? Um, uh, the, the function that is used inside of Bro is just that insert, Intel insert, uh, which receives uh, the Intel item. And the default approach is to leverage that um, using the input framework. And uh, what the input framework does is just um, when the file is read, it just calls that single function um, to just insert the item into the framework and build up that uh, internal representation. Um, now there are two pitfalls. Um, the, if you're using the files framework, uh, the input framework to read files, um, every time um, the uh, file changes, 
that's point two, all items are reinserted. So that insert function will be called for every item. Um, and um, the changes, um, so in the file should be atomic, so you should use the move command um, to replace the file. Um, so now what's the deal with this? Um, we can have a look at the example of uh, bro.org um, domain as um, the indicator in the intelligence file. Um, and what happens if you feed that to bro is just it builds up the internal representation with the indicator and the connected metadata. So now if you add another line to the file, um, what happens uh, is there will be still the indicator but a new link to a new um, record of metadata um, with uh, test source 2 and um, the, the rest of the metadata. So now if you change the file um, and change the description for the first metadata record there, what happens is that um, the insert um, gets triggered again for all the items, but um, as the source is still the same, what happens internally is um, that the, only the description um, of that representation is updated. So now let's have a look what happens if we change that um, source thing um, in the intelligence item to source 3. Um, then because um, the source of the intelligence for the metadata is kind of the key, what happens internally is um, that there's a, a new uh, metadata record uh, created. So um, what's important to, to get here is that that will not be that um, the second one is deleted, it's still there. Um, and so it's important to get that the files on disk not necessarily represent what's inside of Bro. So um, now that we have that internal representation and how the data was uh, ingested somehow, um, the question is um, how to match intelligence data. So, um, and now we have the data into Bro, we have to make um, the intelligence framework know about things um, that we see on the network traffic. Um, and that's done using um, the scene data structure. So you again can use that to feed data you see in your traffic to the intelligence framework that contains again the indicator and indicator type and some data um, about where it was and which connection it was. So, um, and then um, let's have a look at the data flow. So we have seen we have the items usually coming from files. <laughs> that build up the internal representation. Um, and then what you basically do is um, you report stuff you see to match that. Um, and you can just summarize uh, this as what you see is what you match. So you have to make sure the intelligent framework sees stuff to match stuff. Uh, and what happens is um, that the scene information uh, you feed to the intelligence framework is then combined with uh, that metadata from the internal representation to generate the info record, which is then locked in the intelligence log file. So um, now let's have a look how that really works uh, inside of Bro. So um, there's that function intel scene that receives that scene record with the indicator and that stuff. Um, and to, to make Bro see things, there are a couple of scripts that are shipped with Bro. So um, you just include, as we have seen, the framework's Intel scene script. And for example, there's that um, DNS Bro script. And what it does is it just um, handles the DNS request event um, and then uh, feeds to the Intel framework by using that uh, scene function, um, the query. It reports that is a domain that it has seen and the connection and um, yeah, that's, uh, it was seen in the uh, DNS request. So um, that DNS request is essentially just an enumeration. You can find that uh, in the where locations if you're planning to do your own stuff or add stuff there. So what's important to, to notice here is that the same type, so in that case the domain might be seen in various places. So you will see that uh, for DNS, of course, you will see that also in HTTP headers or TLS connections or certificates. So you can report that scene stuff from wherever you see anything. 
Um, there's another thing that's quite important. So if you have a look at the con established, which reports uh, kind of IPs to the intelligence framework, um, you should have a look at that if statement. So sometimes people ask, why don't I see the IPs? I have some IPs um, that are on the wire, um, but the intelligence framework isn't matching. That's because, um, as you can see here, the intelligence framework um, is reported that IPs only in case the connection is really established. So now let's have a look at the new functionality in the intelligence framework. Um, there are, uh, there's a new intelligence type, so now you can match against subnets. There are suppressible notices if you want to suppress a bunch of notices generated by intelligences. There's a new functionality that you can delete intelligence items, extend the framework itself, and there's also expiration of intelligence items. So I won't talk about um, the first two. They are rather small changes. Um, but um, now I will introduce the uh, letter three, and um, then I will show how they can be combined uh, in the Intel extensions. So let's start with the delete. Um, before Bro 2.5, it was just not possible to delete intelligence items. If you have fed intelligence items into Bro, they are in the internal representation, and to get rid of them, you had to restart Bro. So um, what we did there was um, we implemented that Intel remove functionality. Um, and what it does is um, it receives um, an intelligence item because somehow you have to tell which indicator and also which, so, um, which uh, metadata that's linked should be removed. And by default, it just looks for the metadata and removes that metadata record linked to the indicator. And if it's the last one, it will also remove the indicator. But if you don't care how many metadata records are linked to that um, single uh, indicator, you can also set the um, perch parameter, and then the whole indicator will be removed no matter how many metadata records are attached to it. So then there's the extension mechanism, and that one is based on um, a script uh, Seth wrote for Bro versions older than um, and equal to 2.5. Um, and that uses a hook um, called extend match that receives a couple of parameters. Um, so at first there's the info, that is the record that is locked into the intelligence file, uh, into the log file. Then there's what uh, has been reported as seen to the framework, and then there are the items in the, from the internal representation that matched. Um, and now that um, hook you can use to extend um, the intelligence framework. Um, in a way that you can manipulate the um, parameters and that will um, influence what you are logging. So um, if you're not aware of the hooks, um, I think the Bro documentation describes it as a kind of um, both like function and events. So you have like events, you can have multiple handlers for the hook that are executed in sequence, but like functions, they are executed immediately and not scheduled um, for, uh, like in the event queue, like events. So, and what you can do if you have a sequence of hooks, of hook handlers, you can break. You can call just a break in one of that handlers, um, and that will cause the, the other handlers not to execute. And that is used in that case to prevent logging. So if you define a handler um, um, in, in that case for that extend match, and call a break in one of the handlers, then um, the uh, intelligence info won't be locked in the file. So um, you also have to, have to build up some aggregation logic because, as you see, you will get multiple items, multiple intelligence items, um, as there might be multiple metadata records um, linked to one indicator. And now if you build up that info record, you have to make sure that all the metadata somehow is aggregated into that single um, yeah, uh, uh, lock line. So that's done also using that extend match. Um, for example, in that case, uh, the scene data flows and for the items, the source is aggregated as the comma separated list of sources you have seen. Um, so let's have a look at a simple example. Um, to extend, we, for example, want to add the analyst name to the metadata that we ingest, and we also want to have that information into the log file. So what we do is we add the analyst field to the data metadata record, 
Um, we also um, add the analysts um, field to the info record and then we just fill out the extent match hook um, to build up a set um, of all the analysts that are involved here. And what happens now is that this extra information is also logged. Um, so the aggregation logic, I call it that, um, in this case is just it builds up a set like for the sources. Um, there are a couple of other use cases. Um, the file related info in the intelligence file also uses that extension mechanism um, to build up the info for the log. And there's also a ship with row, a mechanism that implements whitelisting that uh, under the hood is implemented using that uh, hook. Then there's the expiration of intelligence items. So that's also new. You can just load the frameworks Intel do expire and set an expiration timeout for one hour. Um, and uh, what happens is that an intelligence item that you have added will expire and will be deleted after one hour. So what you have to keep in mind is that the reinsertion of items um, will reset that expiration timeout. But that doesn't work for Bro 2.5. There's a fix in Bro 2.5.1, thanks to Fatima and Seth. Um, they discovered it and um, we finally made to fix that. Um, so what happens internally there, there's again a hook. In this uh, case, it's the item expired hook. And if you break that chain of hooks, um, uh, in, in this case, um, the uh, the removal of the item will be triggered. So if you, if you handle that hook and use a break um, and that item expired, um, the item will be deleted. So everything that do expire does is actually it handles the hook by doing the break. But you can also just remove the break and do something else just to handle that timeout. Um, so um, there's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, once um, the Intel file changes, all the Intel items are reinserted. So that you can use to reset the timeout, as already said. And now, so with that mechanism, it's theoretically possible to keep the Intel files on disk uh, and the internal representation of the intelligence in sync. So now let's have a look at the um, intelligence uh, extensions. So at uh, KIT, we had a simple scenario. Um, we, have, we are a kind of a research and educational facility um, with a couple of institutes, couple of students, uh, 9,000 employees. Um, and there's um, that stuff called domain generation algorithms. You probably all know about it. Uh, malware communicates to command and control using that domains. Uh, and what we wanted to do is to monitor that. So the idea was we have a look at the DNS traffic and then there's that DG archive um, which uh, serves us with a feed of um, uh, algorithmic generated domains um, and we just let bro match and uh, generate alerts for that. But if you have a look at these domains, um, there's uh, kind of an issue. So um, there might be um, algorithms that generate domains that are valid for um, time span, very short time span, uh, hours, but there might also be some that are valid for days. So what we want to have is different expiration timeouts. So um, now let's bring all the stuff we've seen so far together to achieve that. Um, to abstract a bit more, the general scenario will be you obtain intelligence, maybe from multiple feeds, um, and they have different characteristics. And that can be different quality, different reliability, or whatever. So in the end, you want to have different expiration intervals. So far, we've seen we can keep the files and the internal representation of row and sync. But um, to support different time spans now, we would have to apply some external logic to that. Uh, and now the idea is to support individual expiration of uh, intervals per item. And to implement that, we are just combining what we have seen so far, the global Intel expiration and also the extension mechanism. Um, I turned that into a package you can find on uh, GitHub. So how does that work? Um, you just install that package with bro package and then you can load the Intel extensions uh, item expire. And the only thing you have to do is you have to add another column to your intelligence files. Um, to specify for every item 
um, the expiration timeout in seconds. So um, how that looks like in the item expire.bro, um, there's just that expire um, element in the metadata that's added here. <coughs> And we've also added the last match, which uh, saves uh, the last match of that item. Um, and there's another hook, the single item expired, which is just the same as we have seen for the global item expiration, just for single items. So now, how to implement that? Um, the idea is to use the extend match hook to prevent logging of hits that have already expired. So what we do here is we check whether the last match uh, already expires from the current time. Um, and then we also call the single item expired hook to allow the user to recover from that. But um, if, we, if we see that it's already expired, we just remove the item. Um, and if not, we just update last match and generate the match for that item. So um, the aggregation logic in that case, because we can again have multiple metadata associated with one of the items and we have to handle multiple items in that case. So um, the metadata might also specify different uh, timeouts. So the kind of aggregation logic in that case is that um, we, only, uh, we generate a hit if any of that metadata indicates that there should be a match. So um, there might also be the case that the indicator is never matched. So we have to care for some garbage collection. And in that case, we just use that global expiration. Um, and we handle that global item expired hook um, to do the cleanup and do uh, especially just the same check again in that case. Uh, and remove the item if it was expired. So um, there's another thing um, in the Intel extensions um, that is the remote control. So we've seen there's that problem that Intel files and the internal representation um, of intelligence data um, might differ. So it's sometimes hard to manage and hard to debug what's actually inside of Bro. So um, using the new broker framework, um, I just wrote a Python script um, you can use uh, to, to uh, interoperate with Bro. Um, and it currently supports uh, that three operations. You can query for intelligence to see whether it's inside of Bro. Um, you can remove an item, for example, if you have accidentally added something uh, that's generating a lot of hits and you don't want that anymore. Um, and uh, of course, you can also insert uh, something, but uh, currently it just uses uh, default metadata. Um, that's because Broker is still under development, um, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess that script will keep evolving uh, together with Broker. Um, so now let's have a look at future work that I'm planning. Um, there are still some improvements that can be done for the intelligence matching. So as you probably all know, Bro um, to scale Bro, you set up clusters. Uh, and there's the manager and there's the worker. And um, for the intelligence framework, it works the way that uh, the manager has a hash table containing the indicators and the metadata. Um, and the workers are only served with the hash sets of the indicators only, so that you don't have to ship all the data to all the workers. Um, but the idea was to do that more efficiently, to do more efficient matching. Um, and um, the first idea was to use bloom filters for that case. But uh, the problem in that case is that you cannot remove anything from the bloom filter. So on Bro Dev, uh, Matthias came up with that nice idea to use cuckoo filters for that case. Um, so uh, Florian, a student at KIT, and I, we started to implement the cuckoo filter stuff for Bro um, to see uh, whether we can improve further on the intelligence matching. So our um, first results are quite promising. So using the cuckoo filters, we can be twice as fast. Um, but the cuckoo filter, like the bloom filter, is a probabilistic data structure. So for the bloom filter, we will have a little false positive rate. Uh, and of course, we have to deal with that. Um, what's interesting is that the cuckoo filter is very small compared to the hash sets. So if you have a look at the numbers, for just one million indicators, the differences are not that uh, significant. 
But if you scale that up to 60 million um, indicators um, in the hash set, you have 2.2 uh, GB byte. Um, and with the Cuckoo filter, you scale down just to about 50 MB. And um, if you think of a cluster that's on a single node, uh, different workers, um, that might really make a difference to, to switch to the Cuckoo filter. So um, what will be the future work? Um, we will try to estimate um, typical uh, intelligence framework workloads because we are not effectively operating Bro. We don't know how many intelligence items people want to ingest to Bro. Um, we also want to evaluate more Cuckoo filter implementations. Right now we are just using the reference implementation of the paper, of the original paper. Um, and we also think we want to implement uh, the Cuckoo filter ourselves uh, and then compare the implementations for speed ups and stuff like that. So um, then, of course, we need to have some test environment um, to do some real life uh, benchmarks to see whether that probabilistic data structure generating uh, some false positive that have to be handled by the manager affect the performance. So maybe there's some work to do um, on that. So uh, that's it, basically. Um, I've talked about the basics, the data model you see on the right, uh, how intelligence is ingested and uh, how it is matched. Um, the three main extensions um, of the intelligence uh, framework um, and uh, how they, for example, can be combined to achieve per item uh, expiration. I've also mentioned the remote control to manage and debug and um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? If you go back um, one or two slides, uh, that one, that one. <laughs> I thought it was funny, and I'm going to say that you you did say this incorrectly. Uh, you, says, you said at the number, of, at the, the one million number of indicators, it's not really that significant of a change. I would actually call that a massively significant change, considering that this is active memory use on the system per bro process. So like each worker now has gone from using an extra 150 megs of memory to using an extra three megs of memory. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> but uh, the other thing I thought was actually particularly interesting with this was that the Cuckoo filter has a, it, it's faster, yep. which bloom filters, I believe, are actually a little bit slower than hash table lookups. Uh, we haven't evaluated the bloom filters because they, as I said, they don't support deletion of items and we are was, well, we're looking for some solution that support to also remove the intelligent items. So um, we just plugged that library into Bro, um, like um, the way like uh, I presented yesterday, um, how the liplock norm plug in, just with a biff and the library behind. So we didn't even do some, some performance tests on, uh, or some performance improvements on that. We just tried to make it work, and that's the first results of it. I, I mean, I, th I think for me personally, it's really hard to complain with faster and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So what is the, the current state of the Cuckoo filter implementation? Is that something that is going to be upstreamed at some point? Is this like looking forward to Bro 2.6 or TBD? Um, actually, we haven't talked to the Bro team about the Cuckoo filter. So right now we are building it as a package. You can just uh, then use the Bro package manager in the end to, to install and use it in your scripts. But it might be worth to implement it also into Bro directly. Seth seems to like it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you.